change in concentration of reactants or products per unit time. The rate of a reaction is the change in concentration of reactants or products per unit time. So what are we saying? We're saying that um, if we denote uh, the reaction rate as RR, we're saying that the rate of a reaction is equal to the change in the concentration of the products uh, per unit time or the change in the concentration of the reactants uh, per unit time so what this actually tells you if uh for a certain reaction um you can calculate the reaction the rate of the reaction using the change of products or the change of concentration of the reactants so that is essentially saying that uh this change in concentration of the product is equal to the change in the concentration of the reactants because uh, in grade 12 we always assume that uh, this reaction is taking place in a closed system there is no product that is being uh, that is leaving the system some way uh, that will lead us to the change in the products being different to the change in the reactants so when do we say a reaction has taken place uh, so to say uh w what is the prerequisite for a reaction to occur so let me just write reaction so the prerequisite for a reaction to occur we need uh, the kinetic energy of a certain molecule to be greater or equals to the activation energy of the reaction uh, to give you an everyday example if you take eggs and you want to boil them and you put them in a pan you put the water in if the water is not at a certain temperature you can put those eggs there for five days they will still not get boiled because the kinetic energy of the water is not equal to or greater than some activation energy that we need for us to be able to boil water so this idea of um average kinetic energy we experience it in real life there's some process that if you cannot turn the heat up to a certain degree uh, they cannot okay for instance uh let's say uh, you're doing a uh, bromination maybe you have propene uh and you add in uh to uh bromine and then you don't have sunlight then that means that the activation energy won't be reached by the the by by the reactants right so we won't get a product right so this thing uh, this idea of activation and of kinetic energy being greater or equals to activation energy it is a really profound idea we see it happening all the time because uh the requirements for this reaction to occur uh, we need the uv or we need sunlight we need some kind of heat uh, for the average kinetic energy of the molecules uh, to go up and then they are equal so they are equals to or greater than the activation energy the other requirements for a reaction to take place is correct um orientation correct orientation uh, for a reaction to occur um we the orientation should be in a certain way and uh, it doesn't always okay just because the reactants are there and then the activation energy is rigged uh, it's not always like that for instance let me use another day-to-day -day example if um let's say for example um you do what okay let's say uh you 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 <laughs> you, you break eggs and then you put them in a pan and then you put a scoop of oil on top and then you don't stay that that those eggs are going to stick at the bottom of the pot because of the orientation yes the oil is there but then it's not orientated how it needs to be orientated orientated for you to achieve your goal so even with other reactions at the uh, molecular level uh, we need a correct orientation for the reaction to occur so if um 
the EK is greater or equals to the EA and the correct and the orientation is correct, then the reaction will occur. Right? So now uh, let's move forward. Let's talk about uh, the factors uh, that affect uh, the reaction rate, uh, factors that affect uh, the reaction rate, right? Um, so the, the first factor, uh, let's start with the nature of the reactants. Uh, this is, uh, the, the first, um, the first, the first, um, the first factor that affect rate of reaction. Uh, when we're talking about the nature, um, it is harder to, react certain chemicals compared to others uh, you might see that um, there's some chemicals in the lab that come with labels that are highly flammable for instance alcohol if there's alcohol on something you cannot put it over fire you have to sort of uh, heat it inside uh, maybe like a bowl of hot water but then if there's no alcohol then you can put that thing directly over fire so the nature of reactants uh, affect the reaction rate there's just some uh, some chemicals that readily react uh, compared to others right so that's the first example uh, that's the first uh, factor that affect uh, the rate of a reaction Another factor that affects uh, the rate of your reaction is the amount of the reactants. So we have a solid, a liquid, and a gas, obviously. So let's start with uh, liquids. So with liquids, um, the concentration, the concentration um, when we come to uh, liquids uh, or aqueous solutions affect the rate of a reaction um, if uh, you increase the concentration uh, then the, the the volume is kept the same you have more number of molecules right so probably uh, you will have more uh, more 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 molecules that have an energy uh, that is um, equals to or greater than the activation energy. So let me denote that uh, using the Boltzmann uh, curve, right? So let's say uh, this is uh, activation energy. Let's say activation energy is here. And let's say this is the number of particles, uh, particles uh, that are reacting, right? So uh, the curve uh, is usually uh, something like this. So these uh, particles here that have an EK which is greater or equals to EA will react. But then what happens is that uh, if you choose uh, to increase the concentration, uh, then you're going to have more molecules that are available, right? So the curve will no longer be, uh, look at what I drew there in blue, but it will be what I draw here uh, in green. Uh, you can see the difference that uh, we have more uh, particles. Uh, this part here, this part here. Let me just uh, find a pen or two. We have more particles uh, that are not uh, that are not reacting compared to the start. But then we have more particles too that have enough EK uh, to go under uh, the reaction. It's like if you have. Um, if you have 100 particles, right? And then only 30% uh, react. And then you're like, okay, let me increase the number of particles. You increase them by to 200. Then 60%, then 60 particles will okay. It's still 30%, right? But then because you increase the number of particles, more particles are reacting, right? Um, another, also, so we talked about the concentration of liquids. And now we're talking about um, the pressure um, of a gas. Uh, for the pressure of a gas, uh, same thing as this graph. Uh, when you increase the pressure, uh, you will then have more particles, right? So you will have more particles uh, that have EK greater or equals to um, the activation energy. And then if um, you have... For, for solids, uh, we have the surface area. So let me say uh, surface area, surface area. 
and then uh, let's denote that uh, surface area um refers to solids so for a surface area uh the same thing happens um the graph it will will take uh this 10 like uh it will be this one that i'm denoting in the blue line in the white line and then if you increase the surface area uh, then you will have uh, the green line that's on top we'll have more particles that have a, a kinetic energy that is greater than or equals to the activation energy so uh, a real example of uh, surface area uh, let's say for instance um you wanna Let's say you want to cook mac and cheese, uh, just for an example. If uh, you take like a big uh, block of cheese and then you just put it in the pot, it will take more time for all the cheese to melt. But then if you grate it first or you cut it into pieces, then it will be easier for the cheese to smelt because now the surface area is greater, right? So if you have a block and then you cut it in half, then where you made the cut, th that surface is an increase in surface area so those particles that are now exposed you will be able to react yeah um, another factor is the temperature right uh, the temperature so let's say the temperature temperature uh, this is true for gas um, liquids and solids right so okay let's go back to the graph again uh, let's say this is the distribution uh, this is activation energy. Uh, this is the number of uh, the particles. And then um, you can see, man, that hey, this reaction is taking forever to take place. And now you want it to happen quicker and you increase the temperature. What is going to happen? Uh, this graph is going to uh, go a bit down and move slightly uh, to the right. Yeah, let me explain why this is true. So you can see that uh, this uh, area where we have particles that have a kinetic energy which is, which is greater or equals to the activation energy has increased. So what is going to happen here? If you increase the temperature, then almost the, the temperature of all the particles is going to go up, right? So if it goes up, then this peak here is supposed to move slightly to the right, right? Because now the kinetic energy, because here on the axis we have the kinetic energy, right? Now the kinetic energy of all the particles has increased. So the graph tree uh, moves slightly um, to the right, right? And then the activated complex, uh, no, no, not the activated complex, but then this area here, uh, which is um, showing uh, the number of particles uh, that have an EK, which is greater or equals to EA, will increase because let's say uh, only two particles uh, initially had an EK, uh, which is greater or equals to EA, and then you increase the, the, the temperature of all particles, then now maybe four particles we have an ek which is greater or equals to uh, ea because don't forget the definition of temperature is the average kinetic energy right the average kinetic energy so that's how um if you if you increase the temperature uh, you affect the rate of a reaction um another Another factor that affects the rate of the reaction is if you add a catalyst. What's the definition of a catalyst? Uh, it is said that it is an alternative path for the reaction to take place, right? So again, uh, let's go back to the graph and, you know, just to cement the idea in our heads. So there we have it, uh, the number of the particles um, and then activated energy and then there is the uh, Boltzmann curve and then now uh, you add a catalyst when you add a catalyst what happens the catalyst is going to uh, put an alternative path so what, what's going to happen at the end is that uh, the activation energy will be the one that moves the activation energy will no longer be here but then it will move slightly to the left so now the activation energy is um, it's sort of uh, reduced. So if uh, these were the particles, 
that had enough EK. Now, even these particles that are in this patch here, they have enough EK. So we'll have uh, the reaction happening quicker and yeah, more efficiently. I'm going to make a separate video uh, where I solve past exam problems on rate of reactions. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss that.